Hey, David. Hey, Frankie. Welcome. Glad you guys could make it to the office. Have, have a seat. Sure. Thanks, Dr. Collins. I appreciate it. <sighs> hey, man, I appreciate you uh, helping us out here, uh, Frankie. I, I'm, I'm sure you, you're pretty nervous about this, huh, my friend? Yeah, man, I am. Yeah, hey, it's okay. Hey, um, Dr. Collins, I just wanted to... Uh, let you know. I want to say thank you, and I just want to let you know uh, what's been what's been going on with with everything. Absolutely. Now, like I said, you remember this is a doctor patient, uh, you know, privilege. Uh, nothing that you guys say will uh, leave this room. I promise you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So. Here's what's happening. Um, Frank, I'll go ahead and tell him. Um, what's going on is basically, um, I've, ha I've been having some really crazy dreams the last few days, and um, bottom line is that I've been dreaming about this, this, these past from Mitch Lawrence, and you know, we, we talked earlier, oh yes, uh, yeah, you know, Mitch Lawrence has been a thorn in my side. And so I've been having nightmares about it, and you know the history that he, he and I had. And um, then on Halloween night, um, you know, I pretty much blew it off. The next couple of days I was okay, and then on Halloween night, I actually um, got on the computer, and my keyboard just locked up. <laughs> I don't know what, I thought it was a virus or some malware, I didn't know what it was, but my keyboard locked up. So I was kind of in dire straits with that, and... Um, Next thing I know, I know it sounds crazy, but Mitch's image showed up on my computer, and he started talking, and uh, Frankie told me the same thing, right, Frank? Yeah, yeah. So the same thing happened with Frankie on the same night, and so we're really freaked out, and we just thought we needed to come see you and, and talk to you about it. I see. So you're, you're saying that you've been having dreams. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, I've been having dreams too, Doc. Same, well, no, I haven't had the dreams, but I have the same thing happening on my computer where my, my, uh, he told me, he told me my little fat, chubby fingers can't stop the keyboard from going, from leaving his image on the screen, and I, I, it was stuck. David, you had the same problem? Yeah, I did. I did, actually, and, uh, so that's what happened and it was weird and we he showed himself as he looks like now coming from hell and he looked all evil and this crazy music was playing in the background and it was like totally orchestrated and it really freaked me out and the, the weird thing I thought it was just me man and then Frankie didn't want to tell me because I know I wasn't I didn't think David believed me yeah see so it was both of us doc oh well David, there's really, frankly, there's really only four explanations why this would have happened. Number one, Mitch Lawrence is still alive. Uh, number two, somebody's playing a mean, dirty prank on you. Uh, phew. Number three, it's simply just your imagination. Or number four, uh, it could be some spirit from the paranoia, um, from the paranormal. That actually uh, uh, is known to happen from time to time. You know, we know spirits showing up and and um, spirits coming and, and touching people in different ways, whether they're good spirits or bad spirits. Uh, no one really truly knows. So let's let's talk about all four of those in particular first. So um, let me just ask you this, David um, and Frankie. Obviously, number one, we're going to rule out Mitch Lawrence is not alive. Um, I Obviously, you know, I've been doing research and reading up on him. And I know that John McBain actually killed him in the church. Um, perfect place for him to die. Ironic. So we know that that's not the, the case. So we know that, that he's that he's dead. Do you agree with that, Franklin? Yeah, yeah. I, I know he's dead, man. But it just still just freaks me out. Just relax, Frankie. Relax. Yeah, yeah, Doc. Just relax, man. Let, let Kevin talk. Yeah, you're right, Doc. Uh, he, um, we know he's dead. Okay. So knowing that that's out, let's check tackle number two. Uh, is somebody maybe playing an evil trick on you guys? Uh, some mean, mean gag, a mean trick. Um, is there anybody that you can think of that would have a motive to do so? 
Well, Doc, uh, Frankie and I have heard Mitch's voice on the phone uh, lately, um, maybe a couple months back, all the way up to maybe a couple weeks ago. But we realized that it wasn't him. It was uh, Cesar Faison playing a game just to get our attention in order for us to um, help him escape a prison uh, in, uh, in Switzerland. And uh, or, or getting some information that he wanted to get a hold of Anna Devane um, and tell how much he loved her and stuff. The guy's crazy. I mean, as my buddy Robert Scorpio says, he's a card-carrying psycho. Uh, but anyway, it, it ended after that because, well, let me just say this. You're sure this is in confidence? Absolutely, David. This is in confidence. Okay, Frankie, should I tell him? Uh, just be careful what you say, man, because, you know... Okay, all I'm going to say, Doc, is Cesar Faison um, has nothing to do with this because he has no motive right now. He has no motive. We've been in touch with him. Uh, I'll just say that. I'll leave it at that. So he has no motive. So that's how that goes. So, well, that eliminates step number two. It's not Cesar Faison. That's number two eliminated. Now let's go to number three. Number three is it's your imagination, and I honestly can't say that it's your imagination either, fellas, because both things happened to both of you. you. You were having your dreams. That could have been an imagination, but those dreams actually maybe came from the paranoia, which leads up to number four. Um, so number three is probably out because it happened to you both at different locations the same night. Am I correct? Yeah, it happened to me about 8 o'clock Halloween night, man. Yeah, it was about um, a little at the same time, a little later, maybe about 8.15, 8.20, maybe somewhere around there. I don't know. It, I kind of lost track of time. It just freaked me out. Well, gentlemen, I hate to say this to you, but uh, you guys are totally normal. There's, uh, based on what you've told me and based on uh, what's going on, I'm needing to say that uh, it's the paranormal. That's actually the spirits are actually coming. You mean to tell me Doc Mitch Lawrence's spirit is haunting us? In any way, shape, or form? Yeah, man, I can't get rid of the guy. He's he's haunting us now more than he was alive. Oh, God, Frankie, yes, I know. Calm down. Just relax, guys. Just relax. Um, now, there's ways to fend off these spirits. Um, you just let the spirits know that you're in control. That you're in charge. If it's an evil spirit, of course. If it's a friendly spirit, then you want to engage it. You don't want to harm it. You just basically just want to leave it alone and engage it in, in a nice way. The evil one, you basically let them know when this person, when this spirits reappear, if they reappear again, and I suspect maybe they will, if it's an evil spirit and it's reappearing, which it could be Mitch Lawrence's spirit, which I think that's what it is. That's my, uh, my area of uh, opportunity to let you guys know that just let it go. Show them that you're in charge and that you're not afraid and then that spirit sooner or later is going to have to leave unless crazy things happen. Now if that does happen then the only thing we can do is maybe a seance, a uh, Ouija board seance uh, to get rid of the evil spirits. There's a lot of different techniques that we can do but for now let's just go ahead and see if we can just show who's boss and uh, show who's in charge. And don't let those secret spirits get to you. Guys, you guys are 100% normal. You guys are okay. Um, and I hope that helped you guys out. Yeah, Doc, thank you, man. I appreciate Thank you for helping helping us out. Frankie, we're good, man. Yeah, you were good. Okay, Doc, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And um, uh, I hope, sorry to waste your time, but uh, thank you. I feel so much better now. Thank you so much. Anytime, gentlemen, anytime. You know, my office is always open. My door is open anytime. You guys have a good day now. All right, thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Doc, man. We appreciate it, man. Good day, gentlemen. Hey, hey, stop, stop. It's a